Hello, welcome to what's bubbling a zimmy. I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and please excuse my grovelly voice. Uh, I was out at a AR VR conference party. Oh, what great hobnobbing and displays and so forth. VR helmets, oh, fun. And then on to a risky business 80s dance until 2.30 in the morning. Ah. Oh. But anyway, let's get to it here. What we're going to take a look at is local to global, global to local, and local to local. These are methods that allow you to translate a X and Y position from one coordinate system to another coordinate system without even thinking about how to do that. So um, that would be like from one container to global or container to container, that kind of thing. Now, we, uh, we're in the middle of making an app, so let's go see. And uh, we've thrown this into a bubbling video. It really should have been maybe in the Zim Capture videos. It probably was somewhere maybe under container in the Zim Learn section. But uh, it's important, so let's do it again. It was requested that we uh, do a video on that, so this is it. And I happen to be building an application. Let's go see it now. I happen to be building an application. You open a browser. And I needed to use local to global, so I kind of went, oh, okay, great. Um, it might have been easier to talk about local to global, global to local, and local to local using just sort of a basic container and uh, nothing else on the stage. Uh, but since I needed it right in a working application, I thought, hey, this is an opportunity. Let's go look at it right in the working application. Also, it's a Zim bubbling, so that's supposed to be something new. And uh, I, we needed to make a change for this application. We needed to make a change to Zim tile and also to physics. So we'll see those changes as well. How the application works is this. It's a present, Zim present. You uh, unwrap it in a sense and are given uh, these things that you can bounce around and boing -a boing -a boing -a. now what um what it will be like catch it catch it catch it boing 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 oh there we go um we'll have these slots it's not finished we'll have these slots down here at the bottom and as a letter goes into the slot if it's the right letter to spell out the phrase that it's sort of like a puzzle phrase. If it's the right letter uh, to spell out, it'll stay in the slot. But if it's the wrong one, it'll go pachoom and shoot out of the slot. And the idea is you try and get the letters into the right slots by using, you can't actually pick up the letters. Well, if you notice that, you can't pick up the letters, but you can use these shapes to sort of bounce them around and try and get them into the right slots. So there we go. That's the application. And let's see how we made that. So we're not going to look through the whole application here, but we can look at a few things. There, as we'll see, there's going to be a couple changes to Zim. So we've, I've moved to a local version of Zim, 6.7.1. It's not even launched or released out there. When it is released, it will get the CDN URL. So uh, how we do is as we make things and, and need to make changes to the document, we go to a local version, start uh, making some changes, and once we get a few of them in there, then we'll, uh, we'll launch it. Um, there's also an update to physics coming along. This um, a change needs to be done there too. <clears throat> so we're using Box2D for the physics of that, and then the physics, uh, Zim physics, just helps uh, make using using Box2D a little bit easier. All right, let's scroll down to where we made the balls. Did you catch all that stuff? Wonderful. So here's where we made the balls. And there was this complicated equation going on. So as, as working away and how um, physics works is you make a physics body. Well, let's just back up a touch, I suppose. We've got the letters. We'll start with the letters. We've got the Oh, spoiler. Uh, there we go. That's the um, that's the answer that you're looking for. Zim present. The app's called Zim present. So the letters are scrambled uh, of that. So what we do is we split that phrase up on nothing, basically. That makes an array. Then we shuffle the array using Zim shuffle to get letters, which is a shuffled array. We loop through that shuffled array of letters. And each time we loop, we get given what the letter is, along with an 
index, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then a total, 11. There's 11 letters, including the space. We make a physics body. Okay, that's using Zim Physics to, in, in behind, make a box 2D body. And we make a Zim body which is a new circle, which in behind is a new create yes, shape that is a circle. And we're adding it to a container of balls. And, uh, and how we do it is this is visual. The physics body is invisible. We can't even see it. Or if we turn on the debug mode, then we get to see an outline of it, but it's not really visual for the end user to see. So instead, we have to map our own shapes or pictures. You could um, put in a, a bitmap here, an image like we did in soup. So if you go to the Zim bits and see the physics soup example, we mapped carrots and mushrooms, celery onto, onto physics shapes. But in this case, it's a, just a Zim circle onto it. And then down here at the bottom of the loop is physics.addMap. We're mapping the shape, right? mapping the shape to the body. All right, good. We're, we're also putting a label onto the shape. And then down here, this is the tricky part that I didn't really, you know, it's like, ugh, ugh, bleh. Uh, one of the things is the results of the puzzle. Like once you solve the puzzle, then we guide the people into Zim badges for that puzzle. So Zim badges is a tutorial uh, section of Zim. And we've already got one on art, and we've got one on um, making an app. And this one will be on making a puzzle or something like that, or using physics maybe. And this, it's a step-by-step -step right throughout the whole of the code. We don't want it to be easy, easy, easy peasy. We want it to be real. Uh, the thing about interactive media is a lot of the things we make look easy on the outside, but it's really a combination of a hundred lines up you know, like easy little bits of code, maybe once you know what you're doing with code, but still complex seeming because there's a lot of it and it's all interrelated or all related. So Zim Badges uh, takes you through the, you know, 60 steps of building these types of things. Each step of the way, it asks you um, to try and do it yourself, and then it will give answers. It will give helps and tips and resources each step of the way. So this type of thing, uh, kind of looking and going, okay, a tutorial on, on, on what that means is like, oh, do I really want to do that? And then just recently, maybe three months ago, we made Zim Tile. So Zim Tile tiles something. In other words, as I was building the app, I realized, okay, I've done this, it works, but I, I should consider converting it to Zim Tile. So I was just in the process of converting it to a Zim Tile, which will tile a shape for you and basically abstracts this. Abstract means to take away. So it takes away these things here, puts it into Zim Tile so that you don't have to see it. And I think that would be better for badges. Anytime that the Zim can do something in an easy way, Zim badges will use the Zim way. Um, so it's not totally going right back to how to code everything by scratch. Vanilla JavaScript, as they say, I hate that phrase. But um, anyway, there you go. Uh, heck, we get enough JavaScript <laughs> without having to do this stuff if we don't want to. All right, so what this means though, by the way, is as i is increasing, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, it's using that single increasing i to give rows and columns, or columns and rows. So isn't that cool? So here's the x, the x is obviously going across, so it'll be the columns. I percent four, that's a modulus. So it's dividing the count by four, and then, or the, the uh, index there, the I by four, and the results of it is what it's using. So in the first case, it's zero, one, two, three, but when I becomes four, uh, the answer to the modulus here is zero again. So this is the remainder of four divided by four, there's no remainder, zero. So it really turns I into zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three. And then we're multiplying that number by the spacing between the two um, circles. So what we're doing is we're tiling these circles so they hide in behind the box. If we just put all the circles behind the box in a big line, we'd see them. 
you know, I could fade them in, but it would look kind of silly, like they're not coming in out from the box. So we, we're tiling them behind the box. This does four columns of them. Uh, that's just an adjustment. The Y, um, and, and each time we're moving it over to the box position. So we're like going over to the box position and then starting our tiling. And we're going down to the box position and starting our tiling. And this does the tiling. We uh, divide the total by four and math.floor it. That will end up giving us one, 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 two, 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 or sorry, zero, 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 one, 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 two, two, two. So that gives us our rows. And we're moving down each time, some adjustment. All right, still, I'd rather not have to explain that if I didn't have to. So we got to a point where we're going to implement zim tile, and here we are. Let's implement zim tile. So, uh, when we're making the shape, each circle in the loop, we're adding it to balls. We didn't take a look to see what balls are, so let's take a look at our balls. Uh, right here, we've got var balls equals a new container. Oh, I almost didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> laughing. Uh, <clears throat> my apology. <clears throat> so uh, we'll take a look at a new container here. <laughs> Not our balls. Take a look at a new container. Uh, this is added to the stage, the container, and then each time we add the balls to the container. Uh, and since it's just added to the stage, that means it's at zero, zero, and that makes things easier. Yay! So it how we started off, this is all pretty easy. The container that balls are in are at zero, zero. So therefore, both are balls. God. <laughs> okay, stop it. Both the balls <laughs> and the physics bodies. Uh, the physics bodies are at zero, zero as well. And therefore, we can um, match them up and map them properly and, and great. And the mapping should really take into account uh, coordinate systems, <laughs> but as, as we'll see, that was, that was sort of like one of the problems. So uh, we'll come to that in just a bit. For now, though, and, uh, let's just tile the balls. Okay, so we won't be making a shape down here. We uh, won't be using our container of balls, but instead, We'll use this. And here's how far I got and realized, oh, okay, hey, let's do a bumping on all this stuff. So var balls now is equal to a new tile. And what tile is, is it extends a container. So it's going to be the container that you, you know, that used to be here. But it, it, it's a container. And what's in the container, this this is a Zim display object or, or create just display object, a display object that we pass into that, it will clone it four times for the columns and then three, you know, three times for the rows. So it makes a, a grid four by three of this shape. Isn't that neat? And let's just see that so you can visualize it a little bit better. Uh, we will return here. Return just means don't bother making them move and map and all that kind of stuff. And we refresh, open her up, and there they are. So that's the Zim tile. So that was pretty easy, huh? We, we tiled our balls. We didn't have to worry about the uh, calculations to move these things over and, 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 and so forth. It's already been done for us. So now what we can do is just start our physics balls at the location of these balls. And there's when we, we have that coordinate system problem. Because as you can see here, I'll just pop back here, uh, we're center regging the tile, which is a container on the stage. We've also put outline, dot outline there. Uh, the, the alpha of zero is being brought up to one quickly, so that's why when we refresh here, you can see that as I open that up, they sort of fade, fade up. Uh, so there they are. But uh, the point is tiles, the container, which is tiles or balls, I guess it's called balls. Here's what it looks like. When we outline it, this is its bounds. Here's its registration point, which has been center regged on stage. And here, this little X means the origin. So that's where zero, zero is within the container. And these balls have been tiled to be within the container. So the X and Y position of the first ball is zero, zero. Uh, by the way, the origin of the, or not the origin, well, the origin is in the center as well, but the registration point of each ball is in the center. 
Um, should we see that? Let's just... Uh, oh, well... Uh, yeah, I'd have to loop through the balls again and apply their... Yeah, because... I'll, I'll show you that later if we get to it. All right, so just be known that therefore the zero, zero, the X, X and Y of um, this ball is at zero, zero inside of balls. The X and Y of the second ball over here is say like 70 or whatever, however many pixels over that is, 70, zero. Uh, the X and Y of this one is like 140 and zero and, and so forth. So the X positions are relative to that little cross. So inside the container, okay. We, uh, we've got these great in place. Now we want to put the physics balls. Now the physics balls are out here relative to the coordinate system of zero, zero. So if we just say put the physics ball at the same X and Y as the, uh, the shape here, it's going to be the wrong place because the, this X and Y is zero, zero. So therefore the ball would be right here. This one is at 70, zero. So therefore the physics ball would be at 70, zero in the wrong coordinate system. So we need something to be able to translate from this coordinate system, which is a local coordinate system, to a global coordinate system out here. So that's where local to global comes in. And the coordinate system we're talking about, the local coordinate system, is balls. So let's go in and uh, position. So great, we'll take out this return. We'll come on down here. Uh, we need to do a few things just before we get there, though. We, we still need a shape. The shape uh, needs a label put in it. The shape's already been made. So rather than making the shape here, the shape's already been made. It's inside of balls. So we go bar shape is equal to balls dot get child at i, the index. So as we're looping, i's going up, we're going to get a letter. We're going to, uh, we get the letter. We also have i, we get the ball at i that we're going to put the letter on. Great. So good. And now we come down here. Here's where we're doing the box body x and box body y. No longer do we have to be concerned with this complicated equation. That was to get the tiling, so bye-bye that stuff. Instead, we want to say body.x is equal to, now we can't say this, we can't say it's equal to shape.x, because remember the first shape.x is zero, and if we put the body's x at zero, that's a different coordinate system that's up in the left-hand corner of the stage, not in the left-hand corner of, of balls. So um, we got to do something first, and that's where we say, all right, let's use the uh, local to global method. Now that will return a point, a point that has been uh, converted from one coordinate system to another. So we just say our point is equal to, we collect that in a variable, our point is equal to our coordinate system that we're dealing with, which is balls dot uh, we want to go local from a local position in balls to a global position on the stage. And the point that we're doing is shape.x and shape.y. So shape represents our, this is a shape, that's a shape, that's a shape, that's a shape. So we're, we're changing shapes.x and y position. So from here, shapes.x and y to a global coordinate system. So when it comes to this one right here, say that's 70 in the X and zero. So right here, um, we're converting the 70 to a global 70, which will be end up being in the same place here. So this thing right here, it, it, it's basically taking the position of this plus the position of that. So it's a little bit trivial in just a movement like this. All, all we're doing is moving over. We could, if we wanted to, say the um, x position of balls plus the x position of, of the shape. But imagine if this container were rotated. So if we rotated it, it becomes very difficult. If it's, if it's uh, scaled, it becomes, well, it's not too bad if it's scaled, but it's still tricky if it's scaled and skewed. Ah, you know, so um, it, rather than, and just take 
the, the easy way out right now and say something like uh, box.x plus the shapes.x, which we could do and same with y. Rather than do it that way, I think it helps to just start using local to global and global to local and local to local whenever you need to use that. And then after a few times, this actually becomes easier than even thinking about anything else and certainly way easier than uh, than when we're rotating. And sometimes you don't know, right? Sometimes we have three containers inside of three containers and that would, you know, and multiple containers rotated, multiple containers scaled, flipped, you know, it's like, ah. So we had to deal with that with Zim Drag. Zim Drag allows you to drag something inside of any of these strange containers. Some of you, if you're just coming from CreateJS uh, into Zim, uh, you might say, "Well, you know, it's easy enough to drag." Yeah, it's easy enough to drag if if you've got the same coordinate system. It's a maybe four or five lines of code. But as soon as you start working in multiple coordinate systems, it becomes trickier, and then there's even more things on uh, that ZimDrag does. Okay, so anyway, here we are. Where did we get to? Um, now that we've made a point that is in the global, so this point is in the global scope, because you see how it says local to global, we use that points x and y. So point is just a create JS point, which is like a probably an object literal with an X and Y property. <laughs> That's about it. So there we go. This is the global point of the converted from our local point. And we say, please put the body's X to that point. So this is what uh, converting often looks like. You do a conversion, store the conversion in a point, and then instead of using the, the bad one that would be broken, use the converted one, which is good, just as if it were that. Okay, so not too bad. Most of them then become those three lines, just like that. Alrighty, um, let's see. Now this should work. Shall we see if it works? Let me save that up. We come here and we refresh. Did I get rid of the return? Yeah, there we go. Oh, something doesn't look right. Ready, watch this again. See all those little things? On the side falling down. And then this stuff looks strange, like that circle's in the air. How the heck did that happen? What's, what's, something's broken. Well, what's happening is this. The physics balls were put in the right place, and they've dropped down and they've landed in here. But unfortunately, physics itself is broken. Like Zim physics didn't take into account the coordinate systems. So when we made it, we assumed that your... Um, physics ball or physics shapes and your Zim shapes would be in the stage coordinates, in the global coordinates. And, and yet that's not the case. And as soon as I created um, this example and went to physics, I, I wondered, I went, ooh, you know, did I actually do global to local back again? Um, and the answer is no, as you can see here. Oh, we can get a demonstration, a little bit of that. Let's just go into the the uh, app here now, uh, where are we? This is the index, here it is, physics debug. So we'll, we'll turn the debug of the physics on and then we can see the physics objects and the Zim objects. There they are. So the Zim objects, or shapes, just left the stage. Uh, these ones are still here and you can see that that's why some of these are sitting up in the air is because these balls are actually still here, we just couldn't see them before. Try that again. Refresh. There go the Zim ones. Here these are still moving. And when they stop moving, they turn gray and so forth. So, uh, right, let's turn that back off. We'll come on down. So what needs to be fixed? Any thoughts? We're good on this side. We need to go into physics then. So here's physics. We have scrolled down to find out where we, we've got the mapping. And here it is, Zim objects X is equal to the physics object X. Zim object Y is equal to the physics object Y. The scale is, by the way, box 2D works in meters. So that's one of the things that the Zim physics does is it abstracts away those meters and we're always just working in pixels. So I think that's probably better for us. Uh, so don't worry about that. That just means that's the X position of the physics object and the Y position. And then we're setting it directly. 
So that's not what we want. This is a global position. And then we want an X position, though, of a local X position within the Zim object's parent. So uh, that's what we have to do. We will get a point. So var point is equal to the uh, the uh, the container that holds this, the coordinate system that holds the x and y of the object, is the object's parent. So zim obj dot parent like that dot, uh, and this time we want a global point converted into a local point within the parent. The global point of the physics converted to local. So dot global to local, like that, and then we put the global point, comma, and uh, y, semicolon, and here we don't set it to the, the bad global point, but instead the local point. So that's the local points, point dot x, and the local points dot y. Great. So there we go. The three the three lines that we had before, we save a point that is our converted point, and then we use the converted point after. Because these need to be in the coordinate system of that holds the object. So we save that and we come back here and we refresh and we open it up and our balls are back into the right place. It's always good to have your balls in the right place. Here we go. Badunk. Cool, huh? So that's a bit about global to local. We've also made a, a change to Zim physics so that now you don't have to worry about that. And we have made a change to the tile as well to include a count, which is really a little bit unrelated, but uh, that's fine. Oh, that's uh, changing the tiles. And then back in our main page here, we're all good. Any thoughts? I wonder, you know, let's just take a look at one more thing before we go, if that's okay. Sorry, I know this has been a long one, uh, but this is kind of a neat little trick, and it, it also helps exemplify some, maybe some of the issues here. So let's just put the return back in here, return, and uh, run this again, check it out. There we go. Now, we said let's convert the local position of the of the ball within the coordinate system of balls, let's convert that position to global. What would happen if we used a coordinate system of the ball itself, so of, of the shape? So what that does is, um, I was going to turn the uh, the outlines of each of these in. If, if we use the coordinate system of the shape itself and need to convert a point within that to global, uh, we have to be careful. The, the very first thing we would say, uh, the, the thing that often, you know, that I did initially for the first couple of years of using this, is I said, all right, we're using the shapes X and the shapes Y, therefore it is shape.local to global. What this means is um, take the shapes X and Y, that point within shape, and convert it to global. Let's just take a look at what that really would mean. So say this one right here, here's the shape. Um, its coordinate system, it, its x is right in the middle of that. So its x is right in the middle. If we ask for the shapes x and y within this coordinate system, let me just turn on the coordinate system so we can see that. Make it a bit easier, child like a die dot outline. So we'll just outline, I think this will work. Doop. No, it didn't work. Um, dot outline. Let's get that right. Balls dot get child out. Oh, get child out is a create js. Um, yeah, sorry. Uh, get child out is a, a create js method, so it doesn't return the shape. What does body shape shape? push by well okay we'll just shape dot outline outline like so 
And let's save this up. Refresh. And open. No, oh, still not there. What's going on? Shape.outline balls dot get child at. Uh, Shape is equal to that. And it's a body. Well, that should have done it. I'm not sure what's causing that to work. Push on the body. Oh, regardless. I mean, um, okay. Well, well, let's figure it out. That's shape point physics body shape. Yeah, that should be fine. Balls dot get child at i. Oh, that does return. That does return a shape. So that, or I mean, that should return the thing. Um, dot outline. We're we getting an error message. Outline. Refresh. Hmm. F12. Uh, unreachable after. Re oh, <laughs> okay. I know what it is. Unreachable after um, the return statement. So do you see what it is now? We're outlining it here, but our return is here. <laughs> Silly billies. Okay, so we'll take out the return for now. That means those balls will all go off in, into uh, who knows where, but we do have our outlines now. <laughs> Yay! So it wasn't even running that code when we were trying to outline it. So imagine that the balls are then still there. It's not too hard to imagine, I suppose. So. The shape, by the way, is a, or the outline is a snapshot in time. That's why whenever we apply the outline, it just stays there. It doesn't follow the ball around, or you know, it doesn't follow the shape around. Okay, so if we're in this ball's coordinate system, there's the center, and then if we say, please convert the balls x and y to global, the balls x and y, the x of the ball is actually from here to here. Like from from this is the uh, that happens to be a ball as well, but it's also the the x is of the of the balls is kind of sitting right on there as well. So the ball this ball's x is this distance. So if we ask to convert the um, coordinate system uh, of of this shape, it would be this distance, like to over here. So this distance probably if these are equal, which they are, it would be this distance. So we'd end up getting a global point of here rather than there. So can you see what you want to use for the x and y of this statement right here? Shape dot local to global. Not the shapes dot x and y, because that's the x and y inside of the shapes parent. Well, the answer is relatively simple. The zero, zero. Isn't that weird? So we want the zero zero. We want to know where the zero zero of this shape is in the global. We want to know where the zero zero of this shape, because that's right there, uh, in there. And then we put the physics ball there. So that's all it becomes, which is actually simpler than what we had before. But the problem is, is we often think of it in terms of the x and y immediately. So the first thing we think of is, oh, we, we've got a point with its x and its y. So if that's the first thing that you think of, you just have to be careful because it's so... Um, you know, you just want to say shape dot x and shape dot y. Oh boy, this has been a long bubbling, hasn't it? You just want to say shape dot x, shape dot y, and you sort of think you put shape there. No, it's shape dot parent. Okay. If you do use shape there, then you're actually using zero zero. Do we see that work? Let's see it work. Zero and uh, zero there. We save that up and let's just check this out. Badoop. There they all are working again. All right. And I think that's good. We've got our balls in order. That's a good place to stop the bubbling. It's been over half an hour. I try and always keep these things to under half an hour. But local to global, global to local, local to local, they are quite important. Uh, did I talk to you about local to local? Not really, did I? Um, local to local, whoop, back in. That's when you want to go from one container to another. So say we had another container like um, uh, bumper, bumper. And you want to therefore um, find a local position within bumper that matches the local position here. You would say, uh, comma, bumper. 
So what that would find, it, oh, and you would say instead of local to global, local to local. So it's just like that, pretty easy. Um, you're going from local shape, so here's the point in the local shape, to some other coordinate system, the bumper. Okay, so I would just put the stage there and that would be basically the same as local to global, like so. All right, excellent, yay, we're done. You can go have some tea, I can go have dinner, I'm gonna go have dinner. Let's have a, well, maybe one day we'll have dinner together. Who knows? Anyway, take it easy. This is Inventor Dan Zen for What's Bubbling at Zim at zimjs.com. Uh, ciao. Now, if you made it this far, if you made it this far, if you're hearing this voice, you should come be part of our Slack team. So the Zim Slack team, please. Uh, we've got really nice people in there. They're talking about all this stuff. This is where the request to do local to global came from. So come in and meet the other Dan. There's another Dan there. There's, you know, Frank, there's Amy. There's like a whole bunch of folks there. So if um, if you've made it this far and really care about Zim, just go to zim.com slash code slash slack, S-L-A-C-K, and you'll get an invite to come in. It's a nice, easy thing to join and so forth. It's an online forum uh, where we talk about Zim. There's been about 1,500 conversations there so far within the last three months. So uh, it's going well. Come along and uh, join us. Ciao.